so we're now behind the scenes uh, in the uh, Trial and Desert Museum. So uh, let's go have a look. Some nice cricket breeding. Then over here on this side, just come by, there's some invertebrates over here, a couple different kinds of scorpions, some little colubrid snakes that we just hatched out, like Mountain Arizona snakes. Mountain Kings, uh, Thayer's King Snakes from down in Mexico. These guys have all just come out in the last 10 days or so. What, what are you incubating in there at the moment? Uh, right now, there's there's one Thayer's King Snake still left to hatch in there. That's the only well, thing. One individual? Still. Yeah, just yeah. one individual. Desert Harry Scorpion, that's the biggest. Yeah, uh, we've seen a few of those. Yeah, you probably saw a lot of those up there. Yeah, we saw two quite big ones. Scorpions, the old and the sea ghost. It's about every mountain range out here has got its own. It's not touchy. Scorpion, but it's endemic to the mountain. Don't know what. The fire? No. It's a turd. <laughs> <laughs> this is serious. Pretty good rule of thumb with scorpions, usually. As far as I know, it's pretty much. The bigger, bulkier the pinches are, the less venom. They've got strong pinchers, they don't really need super strong venom. If they've got, they've got weak, weedy looking little pinchers, you know, then you don't worry about them a little more. I go up and down, Jim. So did I. <laughs> so this is our cool room. I thank you. Sneaky fox dog. Check that. It might have been me. <laughs> <laughs> Can't see anything in here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This room is supposed to mostly be montane rattlesnakes, but a lot of other stuff is snuck in here because of lack of, <laughs> lack, lack of adequate space to house them all. Oh, that's a nice clip. Oh, is that the babies? Oh. Yeah, there's three, three babies in there. Oh. And mom's in there, yeah, too. She's right by that. One. The yeah, these these yeah. white ones are so pretty. I think I'll have to get one when I eventually get into hot. <laughs> yeah, they're actually probably easier to get in the EU than they are over here. Really? <laughs> yeah, they seem like they, they do really well. A lot of stuff like that seems to be the case, doesn't it? It's like a lot of places do better with the Australian stuff than Australia yeah. actually does. Yeah. Oh, this is the cross uh, yeah, hybrid yeah, one. It's huge. His scales are bigger, bigger than my fingernails. <laughs> yeah, he's a pretty good sized critter. That's a, a hybrid western yeah. diamondback timber rattlesnake. So it was collected over in central Texas. How, how big do the like the max size for the like, Atrox scan? Around here, probably about five feet. Well, about five feet. Well, about five feet. <laughs> You know, and, and yeah. some of the ones in South Texas, you know, they can get seven feet long. Really? Because, you know? yeah, I, know, I knew they were, like, the second largest <laughs> on yeah, the they're real close, you know. They're, I mean, people argue back and forth which one oh, okay. is bigger. But, um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we've only really seen, like, small ones. Yeah, the, the Arizona ones, very rarely do you see a big one. Like that, that one that's on exhibit out there, 
I call him Blue. Yeah, well, there's a, there's a big there's a big diamond back out there. He's as big as I've ever seen. Oh, okay. And he's he's nowhere near as big as that animal is. This guy this guy's about five, a little bit over five feet long. Yeah, he's like really chunky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's got the, the the big the South Texas Aatrox are just huge in diameter. And are the, these guys uh, fertile? Then probably yeah. I know uh, Eastern Diamondback Cambridge Rattlesnake hybrids produce fertile offspring. Really? Oh, okay. You know, so. Oh, is this the hybrid one? Yeah. Yeah. I just see that behind you. These just full of live snakes in them. Just other rats loose. Yeah, there's most, of, most of these are, are rattlesnakes. Uh, a couple of wire snakes in here. Yeah, yeah we saw a live snake hatchling. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's one. I still have yet to see a liar snake around rodeo portal. You know, it's, it's like no, I, just, we, we weren't I can't here. find we were, one here for anything. You know? We were, uh, where were we? Red Rock. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> pretty little snakes. You know? Do it again, then. That's fine. I'm just going for an overview. Kind of. Is it those little ones making a racket? Oh, it could be, could be any could be of the number of them. Yeah. What's these arboreal ones? Yeah, these are uh, arboreal alligator lizards, abronia species. These are abronia uh, are they, are they arboreal than the yeah. alligator lizards? I, I literally caught one earlier, uh, and we're going to be using it for some tomorrow. Yeah. And yeah, well, the I ones, found it the the ones here, not so much. They're oh, pretty okay. much they're, I mean, they will go up in bushes, but they're normally on the ground and right, around the rocks. Yeah. But these guys actually, most of them come from the cloud forest down in southern Mexico, and they're okay. actually up in the trees. You, know. mm. you find a lot of, like, in the bromeliads and things like yeah. that. You know? Yeah, I went to Mexico last year, so I know a few of the species. Mm. Do you have any hoggies in here? No, there's none in, none in here. I got some in the other. Oh, okay. Have a look around then. I accidentally draw a diagram of it. I've been bitten once by a venomous snake. I'm looking for wood to knock on. Um, it wasn't any fun. I heartily don't recommend it. <laughs> well, the wood I can see are in the bibs. The one that got me was the twin spotted rattlesnake. What's that one like? This, this one up there. So, what are all these in here? Oh, it's quite nice. Mountain King of Snake Morphs. Don't even go there. How did you get the antidote? I was actually, I was fit to do, I was working at it. And I was reaching it. I was reaching in like a, like a dumbass to feed one, and totally my brain froze up, and I totally overlooked the fact that there was another one you know, like sitting on a rock. So I reached right past the one sitting on the rock to feed the one in the back of the cage, and the one on the rock nailed that kid. So I had it coming, you know, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't like I was being exercising due caution. You know. See what's no, in here. no, I actually got off pretty easy. Like I said, I had really a very uncomfortable night, you know, of intense pain, and this this arm swelled up about twice normal size, but but no no tissue destruction. Did you not go to the hospital then? No, I went to the hospital, you know, but uh, the, the the doctor that was was our snake bite guy came in, looked at it, and said, "What got you?" And I told him it was a twin spotted rattlesnake. He said, "Anybody ever been bit by one of those?" And I said, "Well, not that I know of." He said, he said, so you're probably going to be all right, so I'm going to, I'm going to recommend you not, that we don't give you antivenin. So we're going to go ahead and constitute some just in case we need it, you know, but, mm -hmm. but uh, if we, don't, if we don't, don't need it, we won't use it. Is there it. still that one which for all the North American rattlesnakes? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Now they just, there's a uh, Crofab is the current antivenin. Yeah. Hey, what's up? So I didn't even recognize y'all when you were in here the other morning. I said, those, those folks look familiar yeah, for some reason. <laughs> and then and so Kim said, hey, I was I was I was marking this one. And I said, ah. Of course it hadn't been about I think 30 years since yeah. we that. Yeah. It's been a long time. Give me my name.
Uh, yeah, you reach a point though where it's you know, a bit of a chore. Yeah, it like becomes a chore, you know. Especially with so many. How many animals are there here? We've got almost 300. Still going. Which one? Oh, this guy. Um, well, these are all babies. This year, there's a few from last year. Most of, most of these are from the Legion Rock Rattle Snakes. Right. There's uh, some uh, Mexican pygmies up here. Do, do you take the eggs out and incubate them? Yeah, well, my, you know, the, 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 the vipers are. Yeah, vipers. all these guys yeah. have, have, have live oh, yeah, babies. Are, right. But uh, yeah, yeah, but we pull, yeah, we pull the eggs and incubate them. Well, what do you breed them for? Fun of it more than anything else. <laughs> Um, well, do, you, do you sell them on then, or? Well, we sell, we sell some, we trade some to other yeah. people, you know, for stuff that, like stuff that we want. Um, you know, a lot of these things are <laughs> essentially unobtainable now, you know, from the wild. Oh, yeah. you know, you know, there's, there's just no getting a lot of things into captivity anymore, so, you know, if we lose what's already in captivity, you know, there'd be no replacing it. And, you know, I mean, people argue back and forth about whether it's, it's a value to, to maintain animals just yeah. in captivity. But, you know, there's no place on earth where things are getting better for wildlife. You know, I mean, every, I don't care where you go, whether it's in this country, Africa, Asia. Penis. Like, it's just steadily <laughs> shrinking. And to me, it's, it's a lot better that we have tigers in cages than we not have tigers at all. You know, and the same thing goes with, you know, with, with snakes. That's where my yeah. channel will yeah, I, I every time I, I, every time I see this thing on your camera, I think he's got a poodle on his arm. <laughs> it's, it's called a dead kitten. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> 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 yeah, I know. I've been, collecting, it's been using it in the desert. You've you got a dirty muff. Yeah, I can put it for you. Yeah, and I, I mean, uh, to actually go from, from maintaining things in captivity and think, okay, we're going to put these animals back in the wild. Yeah, that's a lot more difficult. Is, is a heck of a, you know, well, first you got to have wild to put them back in. Yeah, you got to sort out the situation. Yeah, but, but if you don't have the captive stocks, you don't even have that possibility. You know, it's just gone. I mean, you know, if somebody, somebody back in 1914 or 15 had thought, you know, we probably ought to keep some thylacine. You know, around, so, you know, you know what? Who knows what we could do today? You know, I mean, it, would, it wouldn't probably be that hard to put those animals back into Tasmania. You know, but because nobody did that, you know, you know, we don't even have that option. Although they do have that one alcoholic pickled one. Yeah, you know, maybe, maybe we can clone one one day. You know? But it would be a lot easier, you know, if we had a, an actual captive population. These are uh, the what are they call Applegate Pyros, Wrong. Wachuca Mountain King snakes. Oh, wow. And years and years ago, there were some Mountain Kings caught over in the Wachukas that had less black than normal. Oh, wow, that is gorgeous. And after, after many, many, many generations of, of captive breeding, you know, you end up with one that has almost no black at all on them. You know, they, they look like they'd be an albino, but they're not. You know, they're just, they're just a very... Very you want my finger? You want that? <laughs> nah. I do miss like really young snakes. Yeah, I, I, I really like raising babies. I mean, I've always always been fascinated. Yeah, I've always by, started with by getting them, getting them to do well and. and sorry, oh, I'm scared of the little move. Can't turn the flash off. Sorry. 